The House held an important hearing on a very important issue that we mention here on the Young Turks all the time, the role of money in politics. Now, the real star out of that hearing was unsurprisingly Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who found a way to ask a line of questions that made it abundantly clear that our system of government is moving further and further away from a real democratic process. Take a look. If I wanna run a campaign that is entirely funded by corporate political action committees, is that is there anything that legally prevents me from doing that? No. Okay, so let's say I'm a really, really bad guy. And let's say I have some skeletons in my closet that I need to cover up so that I can get elected. Um, Mr. Smith, is it true that you wrote this article, this opinion piece for the Washington Post entitled, these payments to women were unseemly, that doesn't mean they were illegal? Well, I can't see the piece, but I wrote a piece under that headline in the Post, so I assume that's right. Okay, great. So, green light for hush money. I can do all sorts of terrible things. It's totally legal right now for me to pay people off. And that is considered speech. Yeah. I like you. I mean, how great is it to have one of us, I mean, an actual citizen, so good. <laughs> inside Congress? So good. So, th these are actually fairly straightforward questions. Mm. It's not like she invented something amazing and new, uh, but. What's amazing is that no one else has asked them. Absolutely, <laughs> that she has, I mean, in the context of what Congress is today, she has the courage to ask the right questions, right? But in what our government is supposed to be, it wouldn't be courage, it would just be common sense. But you know, there, look, I think most members of Congress don't ask these difficult questions because A, they're either benefiting from the system, they don't wanna change it, they like the status quo, or for the members of Congress who don't like it and they do see it as a problem, I think they're afraid of retaliation, either by you know donors who could work against them and destroy their chances at reelection, or by other members of Congress, who knows? But I just love seeing her, the youngest woman ever elected into Congress, Fighting like this, holding up that op-ed from the Washington Post and calling out, uh, you know, the the gentleman who who wrote it. And it's not that she's calling him out; she's yeah. calling out what the policy is, what the law is, and it's a crazy law. You know, and as crazy as what she described is, also really crazy is self-financing. Mm -hmm. You know, Jenky, you've often called for the need for full public financing, and AOC so eloquently talked about all of the holes and loopholes within the traditional candidate system. And those same problems also apply really terribly to self-financing. Mm -hmm. And we need people, even before self-financing is illegalized, to voluntarily disavow self-financing, even if they can. Because let's take, for example, someone who wants to self-finance a presidential campaign. In January of 2020, that person could borrow a billion dollars from a foreign government, pick your foreign government. And that's totally legal, right? And totally legally, that person could report the interest that they'd pay on that loan on their tax return. But you know, that 2020 tax return, it wouldn't even be due until April of 2021. So that person who's self-financing by borrowing a billion dollars from, let's say, a foreign-owned bank could legally do so. We'd never know until after the election and then could get a billion dollars. And I'm going to show how it could get even worse. Then... That foreign bank could say, oh, you won the presidency, we're gonna forgive that loan. Now, continuing fully legally, that person would have to report the forgiveness of the loan as a billion dollars of income, and the same foreign bank could say, okay, we're gonna loan you half a billion so you can pay the taxes on the debt forgiveness, and that isn't due for 50 years. So that person's presidency ends, the person reaches the end of her or his life, declares bankruptcy, the debt is never repaid. All of what I just described is totally legal and illustrates that how what AOC, AOC described is even worse for self-financing. And we might have some self-financing candidates this time around. I hope they'll voluntarily disavow self-financing until we finally illegalize it. Well, I mean, so there's two components to that. Uh, obviously, Howard Schultz, Michael Bloomberg are possibilities. And if uh, they disavowed self-financing, they would obviously raise no money at all. Uh, because is there a lot of small donors looking to give to Bloomberg to make sure that uh, taxes on the rich remain low uh, and that we do not get Medicare for all. So it's not a very popular position, which makes you wonder why they're considering running for president. But anyway, 
but think about what Joe said about loans, because there's a certain president right now who got a lot of loans from foreign countries in the past. We don't know because we don't know his tax returns to which degree they were quote unquote forgiven, which would then turn them basically into a de facto gift. And then if he self finances his campaign, then that country helped him finance his run for president. And so that is a very interesting phenomenon. So that's why of course we should not allow private financing of elections. We should have public financing of elections so they serve public interest. And and mainly AOC is pointing it out and and others have it in the past because she doesn't take corporate PAC money. Now if you do take corporate PAC money, it's uncomfortable to make that argument. Because look, Democrats will do pay a lot of lip service to oh, money in politics is bad and Citizens United is bad. And then, but what she's doing is more specific. Now if you take money from the Medicare, you know, the pharmaceutical industry for example, might you be influenced can you do anything you want anyway to help the pharmaceutical industry when you're in Congress? The answer is yes. And other people are not gonna ask that money question because they take money from the pharmaceutical industry. It's not just the Republicans. A huge majority of the Democrats do as well. That's why she's getting under their skin because she's exposing oh, it. Absolutely. You wanna I make a little news? Okay. Right now? Sure. Okay. We talked about last time I'm thinking about running for president. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided if I will. But whether I run or not run this time, if I run ever for any public office, I'll never self-finance a campaign. Because I believe that if my ideas are good enough, I can take them through the competitive marketplace and count on people to support those ideas. And if people won't support those ideas, that means they're not good enough. So if I run in 20, or if I run sometime in the future for anything, I'll never self-finance. Because self-financing is bad for democracy. Okay, so Joe made a really interesting point in there. If you can't raise money from small donors, what does that say about the strength of your ideas? So, you know, I think the DNC did a good thing by saying that they're going to take into account how much money you raise from small donors into whether they're going to allow you to debate. That's a great first step, and you don't see me often complimenting the DNC, but credit where credit is due, and all we want to do is get to the right place. Uh, but I think that all the media would be in much better shape if they paid a lot more attention to that credential. Because why are we having this giant conversation about Howard Schultz if if the only people who agree with him and support him are uh, millionaire television anchors, mm -hmm. right? Can could he raise a single dollar in the rest of the country with his ideas if he had to do it from small donors? Has he? Has he? I mean, I, he's considering running for president. Can he, has he raise any money from any real people? And you know what, Jake? Actually, Howard Schultz could do an incredible public service because if someone who could self finance says she or he's voluntarily going to not self finance because it's bad for democracy, wouldn't that send an incredibly powerful statement? So I guess I have a new challenge for Howard Schultz. I challenge you to join me in a commitment that if either of us run for president, we are not going to self finance even if we could because it's bad for democracy. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.